This is a short demonstration of how to migrate an enterprise phone to WebEx Calling using Call Manager. So the first thing I do is go to upgrade.cisco.com and select Enterprise to WebEx Calling and then prepare my environment. So I want to upload my license files. So you can either do it individually or you can upload a large zip file that contains many devices. So in this example, I'm just going to upload one. So here's my license file. I'll go ahead and upload that. Click Upload. And then that is done. The next step is to follow the instructions, right? So here we have Call Manager or the DHCP method or alternate TFTP. I'm going to use the Call Manager method. And the first thing it says is to configure Control Hub and add your devices there if you want to do Mac-based activation, which is what I want to do, as opposed to activation codes. So let's go ahead and go into Control Hub. And in Control Hub, I will click Devices. And I'm going to add a device. I'm going to add it to an existing user. I'm going to type in the user's name. This device is an 8851. So I will select that. And here's the critical piece. I want to do it by MAC address. So I'll enter the MAC address and click Save. So we have now added that to the system. So let's go back to our instructions and we will proceed to the next step. So the next step is that we actually go into Call Manager and go to Bulk Administration Phones Update Phones Query. So let's go ahead and do that. Bulk Administration Phones Update Phones Query. And my next step will be to filter by the phone model and any other attributes. And I want to follow these instructions very carefully. So let's go ahead and do that. So the phone that I'm interested in is an 8851. And I'm going to search by device type. So 8851, it will contain the expression 8851. I click find. And here is my 8851. There's actually multiple ones. So we're going to actually add another filter. And I'm going to specify the MAC address. So the device name will contain this MAC address. I click Find. And then there is my device. If we go back to the instructions, it says that I need to click Next, Apply Config, and then populate this load server. So let's go ahead and do that. So I click Next. I click Apply Config. And then I will search for the load server. So I'll check this box over here. I will populate this load server. And then check this, the override checkbox. And then I also need to populate the phone load name. Now, if you are running 12.5, 1SR2 or higher, you can actually skip this step. If you're running lower than 12.5, you will need to upgrade to this first. So I'm running 12.5, so that means I can skip down to step 12. So for this, I'm going to find my phone model, which is the 8851. I'm going to copy this. This is the transitional load, right? Once you get onto this load, the rest is automated. So we'll go back to upgrade phones. I'm going to search for phone load. I'll check this box and then I'll populate my phone load name. And now our last step is to run this immediately. It defaults to run later. We want to run this immediately and click submit. So let's take a look at the phone. So our phone has rebooted onto the transitional load and I've sped this process up because it takes normally four to five minutes. But basically, 
it goes to our cloud EDOS server, which essentially will provide it pointers to upgrade.cisco.com as well as WebEx calling. So what the phone is doing is essentially phoning home and it goes to the EDOS server. The EDOS server sends it over to WebEx calling and it also sends it to upgrade.cisco.com to get the license file. So this is a message of success that the license file is authorized. If you didn't put the license key or there was some error there, you will typically see an error message on the screen. But because we followed the process, this is actually a sign of success. The upgrade simply means that it went to a newer version of MPP firmware to get off of the transitional load. So that's what this firmware upgrade means. Let's give it just another second. So the device is now rebooting and it is moving off of the transitional load onto a normal MPP firmware. And as it initializes, it will come up on this screen, which is just the initial startup screen, but it is going to pull its configuration from WebEx calling. You can see we have the phone number up there in the top left, and it will continue to register to WebEx calling and it's just applying the last few pieces of the configuration. So this continues to register and it does have the correct date and time. Thank you.